All right, so uh, in objective two, we are solving logarithmic equations. And solving logarithmic equations is going to proceed in a similar manner to solving exponential ones. One of the methods for exponential was to try to get the bases the same so the exponents are the same. And the other one was, well, just do the inverse, which is a logarithm. And we're going to have the exact same methods right here on solving a logarithmic equations. So I chose this M.C. Escher picture because, as you can see, the white birds are slowly turning into the blackbirds. Like the day is turning into night, or the night's turning into day, however your perspective is. And whenever you are solving these kinds of equations, you're turning it into its inverse. I solve logarithmics by turning it into an exponential equation. So. Look at exercise 9 here. If log base 2 of x is equal to log base 2 of 25, then what does x have to be? So, this is very similar to that mustache property, that if the bases are the same, what you're taking the logs of have to be the same, so x is equal to 25. This is a special little property called the property of equality of logarithmic equations. Very catchy title. So it basically says what we just did in the last exercise. So right there in red, if b, x, and uh, y are all positive real numbers where b can't be 0, then log base b of x is equal to log base b of y if and only if x and y are equal to each other. So just like we saw in the last example, log base 2 of x is equal to log base 2 of 25 as long as x is equal to 25. So this gives us our first way to solve logarithmic equations, and that is to try to get the bases the same, so what we're taking the logs of must be the same. The problem is, is that that's often very impractical, unless the question is framed that way to begin with, like this. So solve this logarithmic equation, and notice that they're both log base 4 on both sides. The bases are the same, the bases are the same, so therefore what we're taking the logs of must be the same. So just set them equal to each other. 2x plus 8 is equal to 6x minus 12. That's all there is to it. Look, simple linear equation. Get all the x's on one side, 4x, add that over 20, so x is equal to 5. Now a key thing here for logarithms though is that there's a domain issue. What you're taking the log of this thing that's inside the parentheses must always be positive, right? Because whenever you go to graph a logarithm, look at the flipping math logo right over here, right up above my head, the dashed graph right there, it never goes to the negative side. So what that means is that what's inside there must always be positive. Is 5 going to keep this side positive and this side positive? And yes, it is. If it is, then uh, we go check, yes, that works, okay. Okay, sometimes that's just, it's just impossible. Like the question was not set up that way and there's no way for me to get one base to look like the other base. So the next method is what is called exponentiating. Exponentiate means that you raise both sides to the same power using the same, or you raise both sides to a power using the same base. Let me clarify. Okay, so raise a quantity, to a power. That's what the word exponentiate, right? Exponent, exponentiate. Now let me be clear about this. Squaring both sides. If I have x is equal to, let's say, the square root of 2, squaring both sides is not exponentiating. What exponentiating is, let's see if that's up here, the two sides of the equation become the exponents. Look right up here. x equals y means that b raised to the x has to be equal to b raised to the y, as long as that b is not 1. It doesn't make sense if that b is 1. So essentially you're rewriting a logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. That's what you will see. And the key thing here is to check for extraneous solutions because there's a domain issue that are whatever we're taking the log of must end up being positive. So um, let's look at this. It's all typed up here, a couple of different methods. The first one is I have that logarithmic equation and I'm going to exponentiate. 
and the base that I want to use is 7. So the equation that's right over there, the log base 7 of 3x minus 2, that's going to become the exponent on the 7. And the 2 on the right hand side is also going to become the exponent on the 7. I do that because on the left hand side, exponent, exponentials and logarithms, they cancel each other out. These things are inverses of each other. So poof, this thing is gone and I'm just left with the original input of 3x minus 2, and then you can simplify 7 squared as uh, 49. And then finally add your 2 over, divide by 3, and x equals 17. So there's the method that involves what's called exponentiating. You choose the base, and your equation becomes the exponents. The base that you choose is the base of the logarithm. Here's the other method. The second method is Let's just take that logarithmic equation and turn it into an exponential equation. What's the base here? The base is 7. It's going to be raised to the 2 power, and it's going to be equal to 3x minus 2. So there it is, rewritten in exponential form. Didn't I get that from method number 1? I got the exact same thing, but here I got it maybe just a little bit sooner. So now just solve that thing for x. I've got to square the 7, add the 2 over, divide by 3, and I still get the exact same answer. Oh, well, let's try it, shall we? Yes? Okay. So solve log base 6 of 3x plus the log base 6 of x minus 4 is equal to 2. Okay. So on this, I'm going to use some log properties first. Because in order to, say, either exponentiate or write it in exponential form, I need to have only one log term in it. So can I use a log property to simplify this left-hand side? It is addition, and I have the same base. Working backwards, that would simplify as the log base 6 of the product of the two things. 3x times x minus 4, and that's equal to 2. Now, I can either exponentiate or I can write this in logarithmic form, or exponential form. If I write it in exponential form, my base is 6. So 6 to the second power, because logarithm always gives me an exponent, is equal to, and now let's go ahead and distribute as we write this down, 3x squared minus 12x. Okay, so on the left hand side of course that's just 36. Notice that everything is divisible by 3, so let's divide everything by 3. 12 equals x squared minus 4x. It's quadratic this time, so get everything on one side. 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then factor, if you can. If you can't, quadratic formula. All right, so open some parentheses. x and x has to multiply up to negative 12, add up to negative uh, 4. So how about minus 6 and a plus 2? Which means that x is equal to 6 or negative 2. Remember, we got to check for extraneous. We have to make sure what's inside the parentheses. Whatever we're taking a log of always stays positive. So let's look at the x equals 6 part. 4 times 6, or 3 times 6, 18, that's good. And uh, what do we got? 6 minus 4 is 2, that's also positive, so this one is okay. If I put in the negative 2, 3 times the negative 2 makes this a negative 6, and this just makes that equation undefined, so I have to throw it away. All right, I think in the next video then, I'm going to have you try some of these logarithmic equations all by yourself.